Hi everyone, Busted Sleeves here. Uh, we've recently gotten some information on what the new patch notes for January look like for Marvel Snap. Uh, they include uh, an adjustment to Leader because it was on a watch list. And I wanted to take a minute to kind of talk about Leader as a card, why people are saying it needs to get um, balanced, and whether or not what Second Dinner is doing for this first attempt at a balance is going to work or not. To start off, Leader has been a polarizing card throughout Marvel Snap's initial launch and was marked as being on a watch list in December. The January patch note is going to be the first attempt to balance this, but many in the community worry it's not going to do enough. So let's dive into the play patterns around Leader and look at the attempt to balance it, as well as what other balances might work possibly better. If you enjoy games of Marble Snap, gameplay, strategy, make sure you hit that sub button and follow to get notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Busted Sleeves. I'm constantly talking about Marble Snap there. So what does Leader do? Leader is a six cost card that currently has four power. On reveal, copy all the cards your opponents played this turn, but on your side. Barring synergy barriers, this means, in theory, you match your opponent's turn with a net positive of Leader's power. It's important to realize that Leader also causes the copies to trigger their on reveal abilities. So what is Leader's play pattern? Well, play pattern is the way you design your deck to unfold, sequence you typically play your cards. For example, a normal play pattern with Kazar seeks to deploy an army of one-drop cards, followed by Kazar or Blue Marble later in the game, that bumps their power up. With Leaders, our payoff card, you can virtually play any shell. Leader's text doesn't care about what the rest of your deck does, just does what your opponent does. Traditionally, this comes with turns one through five being interactive control turns, and then turn six matching and exceeding your opponent by some amount. There are counters to this play pattern, but they require you to play narrow cards on the turn the leader gets played, which then forces you to play narrow, synergy-driven decks, which not everyone enjoys and also really restricts the metagame. It's important to remember that designers have to think from entry-level players all the way up to pro-high-level players when they're designing for a game. Leader punishes the popular go-big strategy of Marvel Snap. This is a really important strategy for newer players because it's one of the simplest ways for them to get used to the mechanics. They don't have a lot of things to maintain and keep up with. They're playing really large threats and just trying to go larger than your opponent. As they learn the game, we hope they pick up other strategy-driven components. But Leader punishes one of the simplest entry points for new players. For example, for example, if I am playing a Go Big deck and I play the Hulk on turn six, and you play Leader on turn six, I'm going to get a copy of Hulk mirroring whatever location you play your Hulk, so we're canceling out each other's 12s, and then I get the additional benefit of my four power off Leader. So Marvel Snap most simply can be boiled down to how much positive, how much negative power are you causing on your side and your opponent's side. In this case, just playing leader gives your opponent plus 12, you plus 16. In a vacuum on paper, that's just the better play. You're getting more power. Yes, there's ways to counter it. Yes, there's restrictions. But it is still something that very, very much puts a vice grip on the format. You can counter leader with cards like Silver Surfer. On reveal, give your three cost cards plus three power. The reason cards like this will counter leader is because leader decks normally aren't having a bunch of three drops. They're a mixture of a curved out deck that tops with leader. So when I play Silver Surfer on turn six, and then you copy it, I'm dealing out 12, 15 power. You're getting maybe three or six off my Silver Surfer. So the net positive favors me. But Silver Surfer is a very narrow card. You have to build around it. Because of that, you're looking at only meal play narrow strategies or very specific decks to counter leader which is normal in all games. That's an important component of all metagames. You have decks that counter each other, but you don't want to force that to always be the case. Another example of a counter would be a Shuri deck. This is a deck I've been playing very heavily lately, and it has a traditionally pretty strong leader matchup. You play Shuri, doubles the power of the next card you play. I typically, if I have She-Hulk, Shuri, and Taskmaster, I'll often skip my turn five, which will often give my opponent priority. And so what that'll mean is I get to play She-Hulk followed by Taskmaster. Um, She-Hulk costs one less for each unspent energy the last turn. So on turn five, I get to roll five energy into the next turn. And then Taskmaster copies the power of the last card you played. So I play She-Hulk first. Sherry doubles it to 20. Taskmaster copies that, also 20. 
And if your opponent flips first, they don't get to have the doubled power off of the She-Hulk. But that, again, also has a lot of caveats, a lot of exceptions, and a lot of narrow components. And the rest of that deck does go big. It can get blown out by Bleeder. Other such hate cards, like Cosmo, really just don't quite get there. You don't want to play Cosmo on turn six and guess where your opponent's going to play the leader. If you play it anywhere else, they can just play around Cosmo. Um, it stops on reveal abilities, but for the most part, you're not wanting to use this card to counter a leader. You're just not winning games if that's your plan. So using the natural counters for this format require you to either be in very narrow decks that punish the opponent by having their leader beached a generic card with small power because what they steal from you doesn't mean much or to play bad style play patterns such as turn 16 Cosmo, hoping you have priority, hoping you call the right lane. All of this also results in both of these strategies, whether you're saving Cosmo or you're playing the different decks that don't have the same synergies. The other card that the leader deck has recently been adopting very heavily, and in my opinion, sometimes is the bigger issue because it does stop all forms of counterplay, is Leech. So Leech is on revealability, removes all the abilities in your opponent's hand. So what I was saying earlier about Silver Surfer, Silver Surfer is a great to play on turn six because if your opponent plays a leader, they don't really get that value off of it. However, if they play Leech on turn five, now you've lost all your text and you're playing these vanilla cards and leader is at its best when your opponents have cards that don't do anything. They're just playing whatever the highest power cards are in their hand, hoping that's good enough because the text is gone. So the sequence of Leech on turn five into leader on turn six is a very oppressive gameplay pattern that really makes it hard for anyone to safely play around it. Because with both of those counters I mentioned earlier, Taskmaster loses its text, She-Hulk loses text, so you're playing a six drop 10, doubles to 20 for Shuri, but you're not gonna get a second location. Taskmaster is now zero power and has no text. Silver Surfer's zero power has no text. So what you're really running into is that you're just constantly going to be getting pushed around by the leader opponent because you can't keep up with what they're doing. An important piece when we start talking about other balancing opponents is remember the way leader works is on reveal. It copies all of the cards your opponent played this turn, but on your side. So that's all three lanes. It's a global effect. We don't see very many global effects in Marvel Snap. So we know leader is going to be big because of the fact it's a global effect. But it also makes it very hard to play around. The balance that Second Dinner has tried to do with leader is that they've just reduced its power from four to three. So now we have a three power. The theory there is that we're making it where leaders are not as much free power on top. So if I go big, then you copying me going big isn't gonna be quite as impactful. If I go Hulk, but I'm already ahead, then your leader's really stressed to get that win. The problem is that's not really leader's play pattern. Leader doesn't really care about its own power. I would play leader for zero power. Leader is there just to duplicate your opponent, just to check them. And if they don't have a very narrow combo, it prevents you from ever getting blown out. It's a safety valve. By dropping its power, you also open up a whole new slew of concerns in the format. A popular card is Mr. Negative. On reveal, switch the power and costs of the cards in your deck. It's a four drop and it's a negative one power. So now what we can do is we can play a Mr. Negative earlier in the game, flip leader to become a three six, and now our leader turns get to play six power off leader for three, and we still have three, which is like kind of your typical average. And so we still have three that you get to spend on another card. So it can be a killmonger to really wipe out a one cost deck. But you end up not having a lot of ways to interact with them, and they end up just getting better by running Mr. Negative. Another component of having leader at six three is that you can start adding other hate cards into your deck that even more constrict the opponent. Specifically, I'm thinking about Sandman. Sandman is a four drop with one. Players can only play one card a turn. Like I said earlier, the leader's at its best when your opponent's cards have no text. Sandman is another alternate version of Leech for you. If your opponent's cards do have text, or even if they don't, you're restricting them from playing multiple cards in a turn. So like I said previously, Shuri, Silver Surfer, both of those cards depend on playing multiple cards in their last turn and they combo on turn six. This means now you have to dodge Sandman and Leech to beat the leader deck. And both of these, because Leech is a 5-3, get better with Mr. Negative. So we're actually building ourselves a shell that make this deck even more controlling 
and has even more speed bumps for your opponents to get around. For me, I feel like this patch doesn't do what we need. I understand that changing cost and power is probably the easiest uh, turnaround for second dinner, so I, I fully understand that that's typically going to be where they start when they're looking at rebalancing cards. But in cards like Leader, you're going to really have to look at the text box, in my opinion, in order to find that sweet spot for Leader to stay relevant. So that will take a little bit more time. You won't be seeing a patch that immediately turns around and fixes Leader, but you're also going to have a better chance that Leader stays playable without being broken. You have to find that balance because second dinner also does not want to just erase cards from the game. So what would I do differently with it? To start, if the issue with leader isn't the stats like we've talked about, how can we either constrict the text or limit its payoff? It's important to keep in mind that a great aspect of Snap so far is that the team listens to feedback, is willing to continue to work on cards for balance, and avoids erasing cards from the game by over nerfing it. So what are some of the strategies we can use to potentially balance leader? Some have mentioned having leader only copy the cards that the location leader is also played at. This puts a lot more pressure on the leader pilot. It gives the opponent a bunch of ways to navigate the play, to play around the leader. And in my opinion, I think this would be too heavy of a nerf right now. It could be that in the future, that's the, just the only realistic solution. But as it stands currently, I don't want to constrict leader that much because I do still want to see the card getting played. My strategy would be look at card restrictions such as crossbones. Crossbones you can only play at a location you're winning. The fun and strong aspect of leader is the across the board impact for six. The ability of the opponent to play the leader anywhere makes counterplay incredibly hard to accomplish. You can't play your cosmo where they're going to play because it's a lot harder to know where it's going to go. I would be interested in exploring one of two restrictions. You can only play leader in a lane you are winning, or you can only play leader in a lane you have more cards. What we gain from this is a far more concrete and restricted play pattern that can still lead to big turns, but provides enough checks that players can line their plays up accordingly. This would mean that you can play cards into the location where they're bound to play leader because there's a limited number of locations they will be able to play leader. They can't lead everywhere. And so you can play cards in that location and play them in an order that only lets them copy the weakest of the cards. Or potentially, they don't get to cop any if you commit in that lane and they're full in that lane. For me, my preference is I don't want it to be having the most cards in a location because those kinds of restrictions can get really messy, especially when you're capped at four and you have locations like Central Park. By having it be that they have to be leading there, that means the leader deck can no longer just run the best hate cards and then finish the game with leader. They're going to need some type of proactive shell. They're going to need to be able to gain an advantage in a lane, which then will also tell the opponents where they might be going with their leader. And it also forces the deck to be multidimensional. So instead of just hate cards followed by leader, they now have to have some kind of advantage to get their payoff. More likely that they run, say, a second six drop, an alternate leader, for such as America Chavez, for when the leader isn't lining up. They don't have a good slot to play it in. Uh, they know that the opponent's going to be able to play around it. So it forces the deck to have to move a little bit. Um, and that's really all you're trying to do. If you want to balance the card in a way that doesn't erase it, but does help the metagame, you just have to get them to shift their feet a little bit. You have to get them to think differently. You have to get your opponents the ability to kind of read your lines. And as it stands right now, it's too hard to do that. I play around leader. I haven't had a ton of losses against leader. A lot of my losses typically come to leech followed by leader. But it, there are times where you just don't have any other way around it and you just get blown out no matter what you do. And that just results in kind of unfun game mistakes. So it's not necessarily that the card is too broken. Um, I think you can play around it, but it's that the play pattern is not ideal. So they have to worry about power as well as enjoyment because they don't want people signing off every time they see a leader. So my decision would be play this at a location you're winning. On reveal, copy all cards your opponents played this turn, but on your side. So same outcome. But instead, my opponent now gets to know a little bit more about where my play is coming. That little bit of restriction, I think, will be just enough to balance things out. Overall, I'm a big fan and believer of the second dinner team. They listen act on meta trends, and they communicate very well. I don't believe this balance will do the trick, and I hope we see some creative solutions to keep leader relevant, like I mentioned before, 
to be honest, in the current form, I still think Leech damages the meta by cutting off the opponent's counterplay, possibly more than even Leader's raw ability. Leader's just what stands out. I hope they monitor the two-card combo moving forward and really track the win-loss rate of how impactful is turn five Leech into turn six Leader versus not having the Leech into Leader. So what do you think? Do you think the Leader balance of three power will be enough to get there? Do you think one of my proposed changes might have a more impactful result? Or do you have a deck or strategy that you find knocks leader out of the way typically? Let me know in the comments below. As always, make sure to hit the like button. And if you want to see more content, find me on Twitter at Busted Sleeves. Thanks for hanging out and go get them koobies.